Hello, I'm Rex Busterfield, and uh, this is another synthesizer in my Sim series, which aims to simulate real instruments. Um, and someone suggested I have a go at doing as in Fowler or Hurdy Gurdy. Yeah, uh, so I have, and uh, this is it, the Sim HG. Like all the other. Uh, sim synthesizers are made it doesn't use any samples it only uses uh, synthesizer techniques behind the scenes which means okay it sounds a little bit less authentic than a, a sample set but it's much more flexible in terms of the range of sounds you can get and the behaviors you can set as i hope you saw in the uh, introduction slideshow uh a herdigurdi is not a defined instrument like a violin uh, it comes in all sorts of shapes and sizes and i gather it goes back to something like the 12th century so uh, it's based on a very ancient instrument um, f just by way of introduction instead of using a bow on a violin it uses a wheel that turns and rubs on the strings um, however it's a drone instrument so you have at least one string which sounds a constant pitch while you turn the handle and uh, some of them have sympathetic strings like uh, you would get vibration on a harp on the open strings so it's a cross between a violin a bagpipe set and and a harp in fact uh, it is its own instrument in its own right in my view so when you first load up the plugin and play a few notes, this is the sound you'll hear. And that is the sound of simulated key click presses. I'll just turn that up a little bit in case on the mixer so you can hear it. And also the sympathetic strings are being energized a little bit by that. So if uh, you want to make a noise like bagpipes you have to do something on the bagpipes you uh, blow a back up and squeeze it to provide air pressure and of course on the herdiger do you have to turn the handle the default way on the presets is to use the pitch wheel to push the pitch bend wheel forwards or backwards so forwards it goes clockwise backwards it goes anti-clockwise and the speed varies according to how much pressure you put on the pitch wheel. Now, if you haven't got a pitch wheel, or you don't want to use the pitch wheel, uh, you've got a manual control here. Which, of course, you can uh, automate in the DAW. Another way you can use this uh, crank handle system is to set a manual value and then flick the pitch wheel back in the opposite direction which is much easier to play uh, sort of rhythmic sounds to alternatively instead of using the pitch wheel you can change over to controller and set the CC number so here it's set to the mod wheel so if I operate the mod wheel Then I can operate the uh, the crank handle and set the speed. And you'll notice that it always goes clockwise. And at a high speed, at a, a threshold you set, which I'll show you later, you can bring in the buzzing bridge, which creates uh, a very characteristic sound of such an instrument. Traditionally, the wheel that rubs on the strings was made out of wood. And as you might expect, after a period of time the wood warped slightly and it would go a little bit off center now i've turned up the wobble setting for the chanters and the drones and you can hear it wobble and there are two wobble waveforms available wobble one and wobble two
double click on manual to stop it now as I'm sure you've guessed uh, the big panel here is for all the uh, sound generating elements apart from the string tuning which is down here I put a separate section here for this because I didn't want to scatter all the, the tuning options around the uh, the user interface so tuning is done here and the sound settings are, are done on this panel and there's a mixer here for vi mixing in the various uh, sound generated elements so I'll talk a bit about the chanters which are the uh, monophonic sounding strings uh, which play the melody against the drones so I'll just set the uh, the wheel moving I'll turn the drones off there's also a level control here you can use just have one string okay we have a range of waveforms basic waveforms which I created to be uh, useful for this type of sound so I don't know let's try that one fluctuation is variation in the sound which you always get on a violin or this type of instrument set the level there the bobble I've already shown you uh, if I turn the envelope down this, this is a mix between the bow and the surface noise of the chanter strings or we can bring in the envelope to modulate that mix the tangents are little wedges that when you press a key uh, press on the uh, the chanter string and reduce its length to increase its pitch um, these can be made from wood or uh, have a felt layer on top or be metal which is on the more more modern system and here we can set the level of the tangent sound when it hits a vibrating string so let's I'll just turn that up let's start the thing going I'll turn the key clicks down and the tangents you'll hear now hopefully so that's the tangent next we come upon the vibrato possibility which you can uh, do on a real instrument by pressing harder on the key so you just press the key gently to make contact with the string to shorten its length but if you press the key harder it's like uh, a bend on a guitar and it only ever goes up in frequency so uh, skilled operators will or players i should say would actually provide um uh, a vibrato by pressing harder or softer on the keys so if i just get this going now I'm operating the mod wheel and nothing's happening because the open notes, which I'll discuss later, can't have vibrato on it. If I play somewhere else, then you hear the vibrato coming in. Alternatively, you can have delayed vibrato and set the amount and the time. So that's the vibrato section there. So we have a tone section here where we set uh, deep and bright, which we're set in a, a variation on uh, a bandpass filter here, but it, it shapes the basic uh, tone coming out of the system. So if I move this going. And these two settings do have an effect on each other, so it's best to adjust both of them one after the other until you get the sound that you like. Finally, we have the level control, which sets the overall level of the chanters. Uh, there's one for the drones too. Um, so you can balance the, set, the level of the chanters against the level of the, the drones. 
So now I'll talk a little bit about the drones. So uh, let's turn the chanters off. Right, so you have fluctuation and wobble as before. And this is a different type of um, surface scraping sound. So I'll just turn this up so you can hear it a bit better. Okay, so that's the scrape. So earlier on, I mentioned the buzzing bridge. And this is uh, an intriguing little device which couples uh, one of the drone strings to the soundboard. And essentially when you play the wheel fast or flick it so it moves quickly, uh, the buzzing bridge, is, or dog as it's called, is pulled away from the soundboard and thus it buzzes like this. And I've got uh, both uh, buzzing bridges because I've provided the options on drone strings one and two. Here you set the threshold at which it happens. So if you wanted to buzz all the time, you can do that. If you don't want it to buzz at all, you can turn it up to one or just turn the level down. Um, so that's the buzzing bridge and it's used generally to add a rhythm on the beat uh, to the music being played and the uh, the action is called a coop which i think means cut uh, so uh, you'll see that a lot in uh, if you look at youtube videos of people playing a hurdy-gurdy and as you would doubtless expect the tone uh, knobs and the level operate in the same ways on the chanters of course you have three chanter strings and up to four drone strings which you can turn on and off individually and these are soft switches so they don't produce clicks so in the way a player would turn the string on and off using a cam you can do that probably best automated in uh, in your door right now I'm going to divert from this uh, main panel while we're talking about strings and go down to the tuning panel where we uh, tune the strings. Now the uh, the open note refers to the chanters so this is the note you get when you start turning the wheel um, and no keys are pressed so if I start the wheel off and press some keys And the other two chanter strings, this is chanter string one, which is this, the bass open note, you provide um, an offset in semitones. So I'll just show you that. You drag up and down on the number. So that's how we tune the chanter strings and also the, the drone strings, which all relate to this open note. So if you want to uh, just change the, uh, the key that you're playing in. Everything moves together to make it a bit easier. We have plus and minus stretch for the three chanter strings which means that as you go higher on the keyboard above the open note the pitch will slight, slightly sharpen or flatten according to where these little knobs are set and we have fine tuning also for all the strings there's a button here for switching between uh, just intonation and equal temperament of course the just intonation uh, relates to the chanters versus the drones so when you're playing a melody line against the drones that's when uh, you may want the um, the sweet or perfect fifth um, and so on to sound uh, recently i treated myself to uh, 
a keyboard with aftertouch so if i press harder on the the key um, then the aftertouch will produce a bend the aftertouch isn't used for anything else on the synth so i'll just uh, show that effect as you uh, may well imagine the fine all adjusts all the fine tunings together so you can tune to an acoustic instrument should you wish to and you can zero all these settings with one one click i provided this transpose knob um, basically if you want to play a melody line from a midi file but it's in a different key you can transpose it to match the open note and the and the drones um, that is really the main use for it so for recording the instrument itself into your door i would just just leave that at zero um, but i found it quite useful of course you could transpose in the door as well but i, I provided a knob um, to make it perhaps a bit easier so now we'll go back on to the main panel and talk briefly about the sympathetic strings where we can set the uh the decay and the damping of those strings here so if i just flick the crank i'll turn this up so that's the sympathetic strings and we can set the pitch of those strings here fine tune them and and, and so on and obviously the in the mixer you set the level there the uh, shape and size of the body and the material it's made from all goes towards affecting the timber or timbre i should say so the formants are single uh frequency resonators uh so the frequency resonance and their level and the modes uh operate at uh, integer harmonics of the frequency you set here so if you set 1000 hertz for instance then you'll get resonance at 1000 hertz 2000 3000 4000 and so on but the level of that resonance tails off at about minus 12 db per octave um, so we've got two ways of setting up the, um, the the timber of the instrument and we can switch these resonators on and off with the little buttons here or we'll turn all the modes off in all the formants so let's turn the formants up a bit turn the modes up a bit so these settings have a big influence on the the final sound the all knob as you might expect adjusts all the frequencies together and maintains their uh, proportion so I'll just demonstrate that so that gives you a quick way of of changing the uh, the timbre of the instrument which might be useful if you want to have several instances of the plugin running but you want them all to sound slightly different so that's uh, a quick way of producing that variation between instances so with all these uh, settings available and keeping in mind it's a synthesizer not a sampler you can uh, make all sorts of different sounds based on uh the hurdy gurdy so you heard me play preset one we've got uh that's the minor gird is so you can set the strings to whatever uh, relative pitches you want um, which uh, is a big advantage of the hurdy-gurdy Uh, 
Uh, this next one, the Gurdy Pipes, it uh, plays on the fact that the instrument is often related to the backpipes, so I uh, tweak this one up to sound a bit more like backpipes. <laughs> And we can do some weird things should we want to. So those are the presets, uh, they're starting points really, um, variations on the theme you could say. Um, so I hope you uh, feel uh, inspired to uh, mess around and uh, make sounds that you like or find interesting. So I'm not going to go into any more detail than that at this point for the video. Um, the download includes my usual user guide which goes into uh, much greater depth than the video and also a lot of background information about hurdy-gurdies on youtube if you if you search for hurdy-gurdy you'll see lots of examples of playing of this instrument and uh, it's been a fascinating journey for me to find out about it uh, so i'll be playing out with a piece called the uh, battle of ogrim if i've uh, pronounce that correctly and uh, a few more pictures for you to look at in the slideshow uh, so i hope you have some fun with it uh, enjoy messing about with it for a bit and uh, so until the next time bye